Brilliant. So, any questions or any doubts you have? Okay, we'll start. So, the remaining thing is only the tables in the annotation. So, we'll be seeing that. So we'll be seeing the table. So let's go to annotate. Over here, you have the table option. So I'll click on table. Now the first thing, uh, there are two ways to create the table. And of course, like everything else that we are having for the styles, for the dimensions, for uh, then you are having for the text. Okay, we are having styles. So same over here for the table also, you are having styles. Right now you can see only the standard option. But when I click over here, I get another option okay where uh, you can set your new style for the table let me just check i have started the recording or not so over here you can create a copy first I'm just name it phoenix or sample anything that you like i'll say continue and after that you get options over here now what are the different options that you get so over here you have the data header uh, title what you want over here how the sales style should be that you can choose from here so let's say i want for the data now for the data how should be the style so what should be the fill color what should be the alignment of it what should be the format of it what should be the type over here data or a label so you can decide from here horizontal vertical margins after that if we come over here to header now all the settings are for the header so in the data, the settings for data is general. Then we are having text setting and we have having border settings of the border should be like spacing and everything line weight, line type and color. After that, we are having header. So in the header, we are having general text border. OK, these are the things that we are having. After that, we are having title. So in the title, we are having again general text and border. So for that, you can have different settings, how you want uh, your table to uh, be like, okay? All the settings you can change and you can make changes accordingly. After you do, click on save. It will be save as a new style and you can use that style and say set current and close. According to that style only, your title, header and data formats will be working. Now coming back to our normal standard, we have over here insertion behavior. So insertion behavior is the specify insertion point and specify window. These are the two different ways to start a table. OK, so two ways you can create the table uh, table over here. So first is specify insertion point. Once I click over here, this radio button. So these are known as radio buttons. So once I click over here, it is asking for how many columns I want. What should be the column width? What should be the data rows and what should be the row height? This is what that is asking. So I have to input this information. After that, it is asking set cells, cell styles. So should I uh, should there be a title at the uh, up or should I be a header? So you can see header is divided into three or uh, there should be a data. So it can be a data. So what is this data header data? So that is the same thing that you had to create over here new. And let's say continue that the changes you are going to make over here for the text borders and everything so that will be same applied settings over here so you have to choose between what type you want generally we have title over here then headers and then whatever data is there so this is what we have so i click on ok and directly you have an insertion point so you can specify where you want to insert you can give the coordinates or you can simply go and click over there so once you are done over here so 
you can see over here we are having titles then this is header you can just come and type whatever you want over here so this is a normal way to create a table okay now if you see over here i can select and of course afterwards i can extend my uh, width of the table so you can see height and width is increasing but the columns and uh, rows are going to remain the same okay so three columns and seven rows they are going to remain the same i can just extend it from one side also so you can see i am extending it okay so this way we can extend it so only this side uh, column i want to extend i can just extend that side column only so of course the column width and this can change but the number of columns and rows are not changing over here after that we are having is another method so i will click on table over here in that we have specify window option so in the specify window option we have columns and data rows okay so columns are 3 and data rows are 7 so we can specify over here how we want so we want columns we want to give it or you want to give column width so if you give column width your columns will be taking automatically and your if you are giving data rows your row height will be taking automatically so this is what is going to stay constant and this is what is going to change okay so these are the things so row height will be auto and the data rows will be maintained as 7 so if i click okay and i create this so you can see over here this is created now i can specify i can increase this as i want so coming back over here let's say select delete this again table i'll make it the same options i'll give okay i'm clicking this point and you can just increase it over here so width is becoming same so once you create this see it is trying to maintain column width 63.5 and it is giving okay so i am maintaining i am creating this okay now what i can do is i can select this complete table and over here i have option to increase now when as i am increasing this you can see the column width and this can change over here okay so this is how it works now we can just select this delete and table let's give this as columns okay three columns Seven data rows. I'm creating this, and now I can just adjust how I want the column width and the column height. Uh, uh, sorry, the column width here, yeah, column width and the row height. I can decide. I can go on extending. This is going to remain constant because over there I said that keep columns and row constant. So you can change over here. But when you are starting at this position, that is your normal method, you cannot change it because it stays as it is. okay later on just you can increase it but before when you create you cannot increase this gives an advantage so you can directly come over here start it and you can just one increase it okay so this is the differences over here now what are the different uh, things let's see so let's say i am going to create a marks over here mark sheet and i'll show you this is mostly like a excel uh, format only okay so i'll just show you how this works mostly like an excel so let's say i have given over here mark sheets and let's say over here i'm going to give names whatever might be there so let's give 1 2 3 4 5 okay so i have created this 1 2 3 what i can do is i can select this all and i can just drag it up till the last point so just a moment now we can just keep on dragging this and you can see 1 2 3 4 5 6 like you drag in excel and you create the number list and this so over here also the same thing works we can log the sale as well so if you want that no one should make the changes so over here you have sale locking option So over here you can choose. Let's say I want to log the content. So the content has been locked over here. So you can see when I am hovering over this, I am not able to edit this. Okay, the content has been locked. But if I double click over here, I can edit this one. So this is your locking options. Now let's say I want to give some mark sheets over here. I am giving some marks. So let's say five. Yeah, I am giving ten. Let's say out of ten, I am just giving random marks. I 
sir can you repeat about the locking and unlocking yeah so you can just select any seal and you can just click on seal and say content locked so the content is locked over here so content is whatever exists over here is the content format may be what type of format is there so formats can be attributes labels okay this type of formats we are have we will be seeing that formats later on but right now we are seeing content locking that is whatever is the content is locked over here now let's say you just make format locked so i can edit this okay but only in particularly this format only okay i cannot have different kind of any other formats over here so you can edit but the format should be same okay that is your format lock and after that you want to lock both the things so i can come over here and select this and say cell locking and say content and format locked so your seal and content format is locked over here now coming over here we want to make addition of this numbers let's say we want total over here so I'll type over here total uh, so i have one yeah. request uh while explaining can you please change the color of your cursor instead of white you can use can you use yellow and something like that a uh, cursor is not visible the crosshair uh ha crosshair also or cursor also like arrow which arrow you are talking about this only right cursor you are seeing the crosshair not talking about the cursor uh in our model but when you select uh, any commands from the uh, tool or uh, ribbon over that, here this? yes yes right right yes. that's cursor let's check if we can see any change to it it will be in your settings sir like uh, pc settings pc settings i don't know if it will affect this it will affect sir Uh, where can it be? Can anyone tell? Uh, sir, go to the. Sir, or mouse. Let's see then. Okay, is this perfect now? Oh, thank you so much, sir. Okay. Yeah. So coming over here, let's say we want to create a total. So I want to create total in this cell. Okay, this cell I want to create a total. So you have an option over here to give formula. So I can click on this formula and say, let's say sum. I want to have a sum of all these numbers. So I can click on sum. Okay. and then i have to choose all the cells that i want so you can see some c2 to c8 so what is c2 this is c2 to c8 okay so sum of it just click outside and you can see over here the sum you got 52 so similarly like uh, excel you can have different formula so sum average count cell equation okay you can put over here so this is the way to do it now let's say i want to export this data so you can uh, export this okay or you want to import the data so over here you have a table from a data link you can see and you can click over here now no data links are found so click over here create a new excel data link and let's say this is sample data link okay now it will ask to uh browse for a file i'll just select this file click on open now it is not showing me anything over here because i have different sheets in it so i can use the sheet and click on preview it will take some time to load so i have a sample sheet over here of coordinates x y z and you can have it over here so this is your coordinates you are having preview you have done click on okay now this link is created click on okay 
so this is it and click on okay and now you can place it okay so we can see this has been placed now you cannot make changes any changes to this values over here because this has been directly linked to the excel file so i have to minimize this and make changes over here whatever changes you want to make you can make so let's say i say over here 20 i have to click on save now once i click on save over here okay what i can do is go to your autocad again if you go to autocad it will be just showing you an uh, pop up let's see so it generally gives you an pop up right now i don't know why it is not giving so generally you get a pop up over here that uh, the there has been a, a changes in the file and should we update this okay so once you get that po uh, pop up you can again uh, make the changes to it so let's say download from source now you can see this changes has been made over here okay so it has been updated but generally you will be getting a pop up over here that the data link has been updated so there are many changes in this let's try if this happens again okay don't know why we are not getting a uh, pop up over here so never mind if this does not happen just click on download from source okay there has been an error we'll do it again so for that linking both the file need to be open at the same time or we can uh, no this file should be closed no. also no problem okay. yeah because we are taking the uh, path from the file okay okay so over here go to annotate table So let it take some time, click on preview. It will take some time to load. Okay. This is what we have over here. Okay. We've got this. Now let's start. Three values out then and click on see. Yeah, so you can see data link has changed. A data link has changed. Uh, any tables using this uh, data link may need to be updated. Just click on this update tables using the data link sample and it will just update it. So you can see the value has been updated. Now if you want to extract any data, we can just click on extract data over here. So you must have uh, saved the drawing before continuing. So let's just save it on desktop. So create a new data extraction or edit an ex uh, existing version. So you can change it into Excel file. For that, let me just have a 
just create first our table Okay, so uh, upload to source of this. So from here also you can change the uh, data set. So let's see, extract data. Now from here, let's just one minute. Let me just check. You have a way to uh, create an CSV file for this. Okay, I'll check this and I will let you know how you can do it. Uh, okay, right click here. Yeah. So we have to right click over here and we have an option I think to extract. Yeah, so click on export over here. So this will be saved as .csv file on the desktop. I can save this. Let's say table1.csv and I'll make it save. So CSV, you can see table one. I'll just double click and we can open this. So right now only uh, title was given over there. So only title came. If you create an complete table, we can just export it as well. Okay. If you want to see only, I'll just do it. Let's see if we can export this only itself. Export table one, see, yes. So you can see this way you can export the table directly. Now coming back over here. Yeah, so that's all about our tables uh, to be created. Okay, any questions in this or any doubts? No, sir. After this, now we are going to start with blocks. Now this is a very important topic uh, that we are going to see. Generally, most of the people don't know what are dynamic blocks. Then we have right block. So many things are there in the block we will be seeing. Now can anyone tell me what are blocks? Yes, you might have worked on AutoCAD. So you might be just having a general idea what is blocks and why they are used. Can anyone tell? Group of objects. Yeah, one by one. Yes, I should tell. A group of objects. A group of objects. Okay. And what is the need to create it? So for example, like uh, when we put furniture in the plan. Okay. Yeah, that can be. So you can just uh, can copy them together. If we yes. multiple that uh, uh, that block, uh, if we edit in single uh, uh, block which we created, it automatically uh, changes in all the multiple items which we have created. Yes, perfect. So that is the perfect use of blocks. See what happens is that let's say you're having an 120 flats, okay, in a single building. In that, uh, in a single floor, there might be many flats that are most similar, that are typical, okay, typical we say. So their doors might be same, uh, their positions of the rooms might be same, okay. So you just copy paste it everywhere. Now, once you do copy paste, and later on, let's say a client says that no, the door should be changed in that particular plan or let's say any other changes you might tell. OK, uh, the openings might be showed somewhere or the windows should be added. Now what happens? All these are typical, but I did not make it as a block. I did it as a copy paste. So I just copied from first floor and I gave it to all other plans. 
Now what happens is that I'll have to go to each flat and make the changes if I have done the copy paste. But instead of that, if I have just done the block. So if I make changes in one block of the same typical room, it will be applied to all the things. OK, so that is why you are having a block options. So now let's see what are the basics of it. Just I'll uh, create some sample rooms and I'll tell you how it works. Change to feet and inches because we want to work more in feet and inches. So coming over here, let's see. I create a rectangle. Okay. It's a sample of a flat. I'll just show. the rectangle size. Set this in the offset. This we can increase. So let's say I want to place over here some doors. I'll just create the doors. Let's see the thickness is. Okay, give at the rate. Don't forget that. REC. And I to create a three fit door, so I'll just copy this from base point. The distance should be let's say three fit three inches. So let's check in between distance what I get. So it's perfectly three fits. Okay. REC. Over here, let's say minus three inches to so give at the rate. Minus three inches. Tap three fits door. Okay. I have created this as a door. Okay. This might be a simple door that you are having. Now I can make this as a uh, complete block, a simple block. I can make it. Okay, so I can show over here. Let's say a circle as well. Arc. I'll just show. So it looks. Point start center end. So this is a door. So what do you do is you just copy it wherever you want to place it. And I just go and place it. Okay. So wherever I think there should be a door, I just go and create and place it. Okay. Uh, over here, I'll just place, I'll rotate it. Of course, you have to select the multiple objects together as well. That is also another problem. Then simply. Okay, so this is what you have done. 
now later on you realize that uh, the client says that don't show openings in the 90 degree angles okay the opening of the door is in 90 degree angle show it in 30 degree angles this is what is uh, client sees so what you will have to do just think this is one flat and it is having three doors so similarly you are having let's say 120 flats are you going to go manually and change this things like select this door panel give rotate option from this point i have to rotate it this is 60 that is 30 degree opening and i'll trim this this is what i have to do or otherwise what you will have to do is you will have to copy this and go on pasting it at other places okay so this is what will be happening you if if, if you just copy paste the thing but if you create a block i'll just show you you come over here select this b block i'll see over here let's say door 1 I'll just pick point, and I'll pick one of the points over here. I have done this inches. Okay. Other settings we are going to see. What are the different settings in this? Click on OK. Now what I am going to do is I'm just going to go on placing this. So let's see. I've selected this. You can come from insert also and select this, or you can just simply copy this as well. No problem. It's one and the same thing. So you can see over here. I created. copies of this blocks so this is also a block only now if i want to change this thing i'll just double click on this door one i click okay and i'll have to change this that is your angle you want to change so rotate trim this close block editor save the changes to door one can you see all the doors have been changed so that is the use of the blocks of course you can just copy paste everything okay you can just copy paste everything but that will create this kinds of problem so when you are having typical things in the project in autocad you have to just create a block and then paste it so it will be easy for you to edit of course at any point of time if you think that over here i don't want it to be edited so make changes to all just select this uh, explode this so it will no longer remain a block and manually you can make change only for the one okay so this way the blocks will help you is that clear what is the use of the blocks and why we create blocks anyone has any doubts in this or any questions on this okay so now let's see one by one what are the settings different settings different ways to create a block okay let's go back normal thing that we create okay now observe that this every element is a different thing so if i select this line you can see these are different okay a rectangle is there so this rectangle is different this arc is different so they are not together okay so to create a block what you have to do is you can either select first only and then click on block no problem i click on block over here you can see four objects selected otherwise what i can do is i can click on block over here and you have the option of select object so right now it will show you that no objects are currently selected so we have the option of select objects so select this and select the objects and give space so now you can see four objects selected so both the ways works okay so first only you can select click on block or you can just come over here select objects and then make the selection once you have made the selection over here first thing you have to give a name so you can input whatever names you want so you can see door one door two whatever the types might be there let's say there might be 10 types of doors in your complete project okay so you can just create all the types of the doors first okay and then you can go on using it this is what generally will be following in revit when we start revit i will be telling you on the project what the things are there how the things work out okay and project how you have to start the things it is not like that that you 
uh, are modeling one side of the flat. You just come over here. You see three doors. Then you make three doors. No, you have to create all the doors first. So in AutoCAD, you can create on place itself. No problem with that. So you have to give the name of the door. So let's say door one. I am giving the name. Okay. So door one I have given. After that, over here we have the option of pick point, or you can specify on screen. So I can click over here pick point, and I can see select over here. Okay. So this is your pick point. Specify on the screen option is that when you are trying to place it, you can specify on the screen what is going to be your pick point. I'll sh uh, show you again. No problem for that. So pick point is the point. From where your uh, creation of the object will start. Okay, so when you are placing the object, this corner will be taken as a placement. Okay, so my cursor will take that point as the placement point. So that is your pick point option. So once this is done, these are the main things that you are having. After that is comes the retain option, convert to block option, and delete option. Now what are these different options? Let's see. Retain option is that your original geometry should be retain as it is. There should be no changes made to that, and it should not be converted to your block. So this is your original geometry. Okay. So to original geometry, nothing should be done. It should be written as it is. After that, you have convert to block. So convert this original geometry to a block. Okay. Don't uh, retain it. Convert this also to a block. And the last is delete. So when I create a block, just delete the original object. I don't need it further. So this is it. So let's see first retain. I'll click on OK, and you can see this geometry is still not a block. It is still retained as the same object. And if I want to place from here, so I can go to Insert, and over here I can say Door One, and I can place it. And the Door One that has been placed, that is over here as a block. And you can see the corner point that was a pick point has been a corner point to pick the point, and you can place it wherever you want it. Okay. This is how it works. Again, let's say I create door two out of this, but this time, what I'm going to do is I can give a pick point. I can give any other pick point, or I can say specify on screen. Now we'll see what is specify on screen. And the second thing is what I'm going to do is convert this to a block. So convert the original geometry as a block, and click on. Okay, over here. Now you can specify the insertion of base point wherever you want. So let's say over here. Okay, so specify on the screen. So that this is where you specify on the screen. Now when I'm going to insert, I'm going for door two. Okay, uh, both the objects were selected together, so both the objects were done as a block. So I'll just do Control Z. Like this block over here. Specify on screen. Otherwise, pick point at that time only. So specify on screen is done. Convert to block. I will say okay. Uh, put a name over here. So to let's say okay. Now you can see it is asking for a base point for me right now. So I can just pick any corner. So now the block is created. Now you can see this has been converted to a block. So that was your convert to block option, and this becomes your Base point. After that, delete option. So I can just select this, go to block, name over here door two. You can say delete and click on just OK. I can have specify on screen remove pick point. I can just use any point as pick point, and I can say OK. So you can see your original geometry has been deleted, but over here the door two you created exists. Okay, is that clear? Any questions or any doubts in this? So please explain. Once yeah. So please explain. So explain once more. Okay. This block and editing the block. Okay. So see, first I created some geometries. Okay. So you can see these are your different objects. Now I want to convert this into a block. So first thing, I have to select it over here, or I can just simply select from the block system. Once you come over here, you have to give, of course, a name for it. So let's say door two. 
I am giving over here. It says that no objects are selected. So I can click over here, select objects and I can just simply select the object give speed. So the objects are now selected in that we are having the options of retain. So what are this options is that retain the geometry as it is. Don't make changes to the original geometry. This is your original geometry. So retain it. So if I click on OK, can you see it remains as it is. There is no changes made to this one, but a separate is created block that is known as door two. OK, so this is created separate. That is your door two. Now another option is that. Sir, in door, in door two we can make it, uh, edits. Yeah, of course you can edit the block. So if I've created this block, I have to double click over here door one and click on OK. You can make the edit. So there is no problem editing any block. We are discussing just the options right now of what is retaining, what is convert to block and what is delete. What happens to original geometry is the question over there. Should it be retained? Should it be uh, deleted or should it be converted to block? This is what we are discussing. OK, is that clear now? So if I select objects, let's say. And I say convert to block. So what happens to original geometry? So over here, what means we have? Let's say this is door three. OK, now what happens to original geometry? This is original geometry. Can you see the original geometry is also converted to a block? When I'm trying to select this, this is converted to a block. So this is your convert to block option. And the next option is that is delete original. So I select this, I click on block. Over here, what names we have? Okay, so I can give door three. And over here, you can say delete and click on OK. So the original geometry is deleted. So but that is in convert to block. Yeah. Uh, we can uh, we can convert it into the, uh, another object, uh, another block. Yeah, like from, what happens like to original geometry? See, original geometry is there, which is of different object. What should happen to that? That is the only question. As it is, it is going to create a block. But of original geometry, what should I do? Should I keep it as it is? Should I uh, convert it to block as well? Or should I delete it? These are the three questions that it asks. Yes. Is it clear to everyone? OK, sir. Anyone else is having any questions in this? So once we create a block of the door and we apply it to the whole project and then okay. we make any changes to any door, suppose we change the angle, okay. then all the angles of all the doors will change according to that. Yes, yes. And sir, if the width of the door is uh, somewhere, suppose it's five feet. So, okay. but the angle is same. Like we are keeping 60 degree angle for all the doors, but the width of some doors are like five feet. Some are three feet. So in okay. that scenario, what so you do? can create two types of blocks. Door one will be of three feet. Door two will be of five feet and you can apply wherever it is necessary. Okay. And sir, group group making group and making block are same or is it different? It's basically same, but blocks is that you get additional things. So you have a uh, dynamic block options. We'll be seeing what is dynamic blocks, how you can make the changes just to give an uh, overview how it is. So I'll just open the panel over here. So you can see I have placed over here this intersection. OK, now this is a block. OK, but this is an dynamic block because at any point of time, let's say I want to change the sign over here. So end all limits. So you can see just I have to click on this. End minimum. Minimum. End maximum. OK, so I can just make changes with the help of this or let's say we are having doors also in this. Let me go to architectural. So I have a door imperial. So this is a block. So in this block, you can see I have the options to change the width in the same block. OK. In one single block, I can change the width. So let's say two fits of door, two fits 
four inches of door, two feet six inches, two feet eight inches, three feet. So I can decide that. I can flip it with the button. So we are going to see this: how to flip it, uh, how to change the angle visibility. So if I click over here, we have this opening angle. So I want the door to be completely closed. So this is a closed door. If I click over here, let's say I want this opening of 45 degree. So opening of 45 degree. So this is individual. So if I make a copy of this. can have this door closed completely but this door is still open and they both are the same blocks this is open 90 degree so both are the same block okay so this is what we will be uh, seeing in the so dynamic in, block in this i guess the uh, door can be stretched only up to 3 feet or something yeah because the like, settings has been made accordingly the constraints mm -hmm. has been given accordingly mm hmm hmm if we have to stretch it like for 6 feet so we can't do that you will have to create your own constraint so if i double click over here door imperial so over here can you see this over here you have different kinds of parameters created okay so we'll be seeing how to create this parameter so opening angle parameter a uh, flipping options parameter this is your door size parameter okay so how to create this we'll be seeing it sir this that you are doing double clicking and editing it is it like similar to what we do in revit uh, double click the families parametric families and edit yeah and yeah yeah we are close yes yes okay. same okay. so nothing but i'll just show you you can just select this and you can go to edit block option as well okay or you can just double click on this so over here edit block so it will open this and it will ask which block you should edit i'll say door imperial and click on okay so this is how it will open so this mostly works like revit family only okay so if you know that in revit you get the door flipping options if you want to flip the sides of the doors which side it is going to be opening so this type of options you get in revit the same options you can have over here but dynamic blocks helps you a lot and reduces a lot of uh, work okay yeah not it it cannot be used for only doors over here let's say vehicle representation how you want it so this is a vehicle side view but if i click over here i can have different kinds of view i can convert this sports car into a sedan car as well that is from the top view but let's say i want a side view of a truck this can be the same block is being converted truck from the front truck from rear but these are how you have to create it inside the block when we edit the block you have to just come over here and we have to change it these are all visibility options so we'll be seeing for the door and the same methodology can be applied everywhere so once we change and save it uh, will it be save for forever or just for one project this can be used in other projects as well to do that to use in other projects we have an option over here that is a uh, right block so we can save this as a complete different file and this can be used again and again wherever required once you create a block you can save that file as a right block we'll be seeing that as well and you you can use it again and again in different projects uh, so you will teach us later right about then how to create dynamic blocks yeah yeah we are going to see that is what i said we are going to see for the doors how to create uh, openings of the doors that is the visibility of the doors then we'll be seeing how to have alignments there are different things in this so we'll be seeing that okay except the constraints we will be seeing everything so if i come over here just yeah so over here we have point uh, we have over here the polar x y all these things are available over here so these are the parameters creation in that we will be seeing alignment flip options and the visibility option these three options we are going to see okay. any other questions or any other doubts so suppose any change you make to this car in the family okay. so that change will exist only for this current project that we are working on 
for the next time we open the um, autocad it will uh, that yeah, change will yeah if you are not saving this block if you are not saving this block the changes will be not applied to the save block that is over here okay, okay. it will save for this only for this project only you will have to save the block as a file if you want to use it again and again mm -hmm. So that's it. Uh, let me take the attendance. Divya? Yes, sir. Ajay? Yes, sir. Samir? Yes, sir. Pavan? Yes, sir. Asif? Yes, sir. Nawaz? Nivedita? Shubham? Giteshwari? Present. Aisha present sir Akash Minu Riaz Fahad yes sir Soleha Tomya Devi yes sir so I'll be making someone wait for the individual call just give me a second Uh, Giteshwari, wait for the individual call. Others can leave. Thank you, everyone.